This is the box that uh, was used to ship all the new scales for the bridge board in. And it's soaked, completely soaking wet. Uh, can see, I mean, it's just, it's just like fabric soak, soaked. And they also had to cap the end because they crushed it so bad. Uh, probably because it was heavy with water. Anyway, um, it looks like all the boxes came through just fine internally. So great, great shipping from Accurite. Um, and it is what it is getting things to Hawaii. You never know. It's always a challenge. But uh, there's all the boxes. I'm going to go ahead and maybe unbox the display and the arm and kind of assemble that little sub-assembly and get that started since I like to hang uh, tools off of that as well. well. See what we end up with and uh, go from there. So I got the mill all cleaned up uh, relatively. We're going to clean this thing, uh, do, do a serious cleaning on this thing. Probably get rid of this busted warning sign. And uh, I got some Got some purple cleaner, uh, and we'll just clean areas as we go. I think the first thing we're going to do is cut all these tie straps loose, free all the cables, and get the readout out of the way, and try and mount the new one and see what that looks like. I really like this setup right here that uh, my predecessor built, uh, so we're going to try and keep that and mount the new one onto this platform. So we'll see how it works. But uh, these, I think we'll use the new brackets just for giggles, but this, this all should be pretty much uh, exactly the same setup. So we're going to start with this one, clean the machine front to back and then top to bottom, and then install the uh, linear scales as we go. We started cleaning up. We got uh, the cables loose. We got the old DRO display out. Drilled a hole and got this guy mounted. And I powered it up. And I have an installation guide. I don't know. Maybe it's okay. Let's give it a go. Nice. So we're just going to go through and see what this installation guide does for us and uh, work at getting this guy dismounted and, uh, and wired in. And uh, this should be super straightforward. The rest, I'm not so sure. I might have to drill and tap. We'll see. Okay, I've got all the uh, mounts mounted. And uh, I've, I've checked everything with a straight edge. Uh, and I've also checked that this is square and is tracking in, uh, in w well within the tolerance. It's only off by maybe a thou from top to bottom depth wise from here to here. So now I'm going to mount the scale to this and then we'll we'll check that sweep again with the scale and uh, just make sure we have we have a I think that the tolerance is 10 thou we have to be within. Uh, I think easily we'll make that here. So let's bolt up the scale and go from there. Okay, I got uh, all this uh, pretty much cleaned up, you know, wiped down. It's 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 pretty nice now. I used new, I used my new mounting brackets. Uh, of course, cleaned everything uh, that that I can get to easily. Um, everything's mounted, uh, indicated in, uh, very square, um, and the best news is it functions. So there's my W right there. And if I go ahead and pull this, uh, pull the handle. Look at that reference. Mm. 
All right. First axis is done. Now I got some serious cleaning to do. Uh, gonna work our way. I'll, I'll do I'll do all that and then work my way down. The the uh, the super clean is working really good. Okay, I've stripped off the Z encoder assembly, and uh, the instructions that they provide show it mounted to that side. But like I said, I really really like this arm right here, and I'd rather not move it. So. It looks to me like all the pieces are symmetrical, so I should be able to mount it on this side, no problem. Not interfere with that. So, what we're going to do, first thing we have to do is move the knee uh, to its mid position. So I'll take a measurement, it's all the way down, I'll take a measurement, I'll move it all the way up, and figure out, you know, where, where center's at. Pretty easy. Okay, I got that block mounted, and uh, what's going to happen is now I mount the rail that the uh, encoder snaps into, or the scale snaps into, and then uh, there's a bracket that runs over here that it picks up the encoder. So the, the, uh, the, the, the seals will actually be on the back side instead of the way they were facing where all the debris comes. So this setup is going to be done properly. What I have to do is get this thing in two axis within uh, 10 thou, I think is my tolerance. Uh, so I'm going to sweep up 8 inches and down 8 inches from, from 0 here. And I shouldn't see more than 10 thou. If I do, first thing I'm going to do is just in and out. And then I'll set this up again, sweep again, and adjust this direction. Uh, once I got in and out with these little jack screws right here, that's not going to change. And then I can move, and I can move it uh, in this direction here. So that's kind of the process for both the uh, the knee readout and also on the other side uh, the Y. X is a whole different matter. Okay, so. Uh, I moved on uh, indicating this edge right here. I moved all the way down to the bottom, and I had about six thou. So all I did was loosen this bottom bolt, slid it over till it read zero again, moved all the way back up, and you can see I'm a half half thou off. So we've got this thing indicated on two planes, and now we can go ahead and finish the assembly. Okay, all my Z is done now. Got everything mounted. See, I had to also add some slots. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I would have added multiple slots in this bracket if I offered it, just for adjustability. I was just trying to keep the package as tight as possible. So I got these little tiny set screws that kind of hold the reed head kind of where it's supposed to be, kind of in the middle of the slot. And... Uh, these are four millimeter screws with nuts on the back side. They didn't include that, but uh, makes sense to me. Anyway, I had to shorten up the block uh, by like a uh, three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, I didn't, well, you know, it's either that or run these set screws really, really, really long to space that out properly. I'd rather run things a little tighter. So all we have to do now is run the wire and give it a test. Okay, it's the next day and uh, I came in and stripped off the Y axis and got the rail mounted and an indicator. I've swept this guy and it's uh, it's good. It's only about three, three thou off from uh, one, one end of travel to the other. So well within the 10 thou that they want. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get all the hardware loaded in here and uh, keep pressing. Well, there's the Y all installed. I used all new bracketry and uh, of course did the measurement and uh, we should be uh, right on the money. Only thing that's left obviously is to uh, do a little cable management. Now, uh, now we're on to the X. Okay, there's the X. Got that all stripped off. C 
seal shot on all all three of my uh, my encoders. So this will be a great addition to uh, push us into the future. Okay, on the x-axis, uh, I have to swap the cable exit out of the encoder to the other side. So I thought this would be a good time to show how that works. Um, I'm just using a snap-on. I think this is a, what, a T10? So it's Torx. You just come in here and loosen these two bolts. There's a little circuit board in here. Let's see if I can get you a better view. Oh, there you go. Here's that little circuit board. So that guy just has to go back in there and don't don't spin the circuit board because it's attached to a ribbon cable. So there's a whole pile of wires on top of that little circuit board, which is really just a connector. See all those wires up in there? You can spin the wires, no problem. So the circuit board stays in one spot, and the wires turn, feed it back in. There's a slot that it can live in. This little circuit board, feeding back in there. And just like that, now the screws can go back in. There we go. Got to make sure you get those so you're not cross threading them. Just based on what I know about these glass scales, you always want to do this before you take these clips off. So that's it. Now we can go install this on the machine. Okay, on the, uh, on the X scale, since there's no bracket that holds it, uh, just bolts straight to the back of the table. Um, I just uh, I swept the, uh, the scale itself, the body of the scale in, uh, checked, and I've got you know two thou from end to end. And this is a, this is a big table, 48 inch. So um, yeah, there's a clip in the center. You can see it right there. And basically, I had a little bit of a dip in the center, and when you put that clip in, you can just use your indicator, sweep from there to right next to it, and then just balance that out. So, like I said, over the whole 48 inches, I've got only about two thou of variance. So, that should be right on the money. Now, all we got to do is uh, move the table over and attach to the bracket using the little set screws and whatnot. We, want, we don't want to pull... We don't want to pull the actual sensor over. We want to just have it stay right where it naturally wants to reside. So we use, there's some little set screws in there that go out and then the bolts tighten down into that bracket. And I'm leaving the original bracket. The new scales came with another bracket, but I'm just gonna leave that guy on there. No sense in disrupting it. This particular one, everything was exactly the same, just bolts right on. And I also should should uh, let you guys know that I did clean this. I used that uh, purple cleaner, and I also uh, stoned the back side of this, so this would be extremely flat. Um, there was a little bit of rust deposits and crud where the other where the other body scale body was. So uh, now it's uh, it's very smooth and very flat. So you can see my lathe, uh, that has a newer uh, Accurite DRO. And now, the bridge port. So this, uh, we got all the wires tied up. Cable management's taken care of now. 
kind of see the condition of this machine. I mean, it's as brand new. It's just had a lot of use. Well, well, well taken care of. You see even way out here. Well, that's it. Um, Four thousand dollars worth of uh, scales and uh, DRO. Interestingly, interestingly enough, it came with. Uh, I ordered enough for uh, four, and the uh, this little this little four inch travel guy here um, was an was an add on kit, I believe. Uh, but the whole kit as a whole came with an extra, a whole extra uh, 16 inch, uh, 16 inch, uh, glass slide. Um, uh, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to contact them and ask them if that's something they can buy back, return our money. Uh, or I guess I'll be, uh, maybe selling that on eBay. And the biggest takeaway, like I showed earlier is this, the, uh, the Z axis, this is actually flipped around from the way it was so now the rubber seals are somewhat protected on the back side now I cleaned the mill up as I went a little bit um, and this took me two days so, and, and some of the mounts were already there. I didn't have to change anything. Like on this guy, I didn't have to drill any holes. I uh, had to sweep everything and make sure everything was aligned because I chose to reuse, uh, to use new brackets. But uh, this is a two day job. So this uh, addition shouldn't have anything to do with the accuracy issues I was experiencing because it was consistent from hole to hole. It's just that first hole uh, is off and all subsequent holes thereafter. So we're going to try it again with this new DRO and uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of progress we make. Uh, I still have some time before that big job's coming through. Uh, vision, a uh, new instrument. Uh, but there we go, new DRO. Uh, Got to keep moving forward or you're falling behind. Mm -hmm.